Good morning. I am holding the scroll of Esther that we read yesterday on the holiday of Purim. Now today is also a holiday. It's Shushan Purim. As the scroll of Esther says that the Jews in Shushan were granted permission to fight and defend themselves against their enemies for one additional day. And the war only ended yesterday in Shushan and today was the celebration of Purim for the Jews living in Shushan. And until today, in all walled cities like Shushan, Jews celebrate Purim today. In the old city of Jerusalem, Purim is celebrated today rather than yesterday. But I want to show you something remarkable in the scroll of Esther. If you look into the scroll of Esther, you will see the following. When it talks about the ten sons of Haman who were hanged in the gallows, it says that they were hanged today on Shushan Purim because they lived in the capital. And when it lists the ten sons of Haman, three of the letters in the names of Haman are written in a miniature form. And I want to show it to you. The first one is Parshandasa. Parshandasa was the first son of Haman. And when it mentions his name, it mentions it with a small letter Tuf. And then, when it says Parmashta, it also spells it with a small letter Shin. And then when it says Vaizasa, as you can see, the letter Yud is in miniature form. So why is it that these three letters are written in miniature form rather than the large font that the rest of the Megillah is written in? And the answer is quite fascinating. If you take the three letters, Tuf, Shin, Zion, in its numerical value, it equals 707, which represents the year 5,707 on the Jewish calendar. When was 5,707? It was the year of 1946. And what happened in 1946? In 1946, the ten sons of Hitler were hanged in the gallows during the Nuremberg trials. At the conclusion, the ten Nazis were tried and hanged in the Nuremberg trials. Like the ten sons of Haman, they met their end by hanging. But what's most remarkable is that when the tenth Nazi Julius Streicher was taken out to be hanged. Before they pulled the noose around his neck and pulled the lever and hanged him, he shouted out, Purim Fest 1946. And no one knows why he called out Purim Fest 1946. But here it was. The ten sons of Haman were hanged like the ten Nazis. And the lesson of this story is, you know, they say what goes around comes around. Or as it says, Hazorim Bedima Berina Yitzoru. King David says in the book of Psalms, those who plant with tears will reap with joy, which means you reap what you sow. If you sow goodness and kindness and love, you reap goodness, kindness and love. But if you sow hatred and evil, that comes around to you as well. And indeed, the very gallo that Haman built to hang Mordechai was the same gallows that came around to him that he and his ten sons were hanged upon. You know, sometimes people say to others, go to hell. The truth is you can't tell anyone to go to hell. You could only send yourself to hell through your evil actions. The story of Purim is a timeless, eternal story with an eternal message that ultimately those who do good will be rewarded. They will reap what they sow. And those who do evil will also reap what they sow. And so too in our present day, we will see the downfall of evil. And those who seek the destruction of innocent lives will ultimately meet their own destruction. Wishing you a Shabbat Shalom. And may this day of Shushan Purim be a joyous day. And like the ten sons of Haman who were hanged, and the ten Nazis at Nuremberg who were hanged, may all evildoers meet their final end, and indeed, we find that throughout Jewish history, righteousness and goodness always prevails over darkness and evil, and 
May the miracles of Purim continue to repeat itself in every generation and in our generation as well. Wishing everyone a Shabbat Shalom, a peaceful and blessed Shabbat.